Greetings, ladies and Mandeljets, and welcome to this latest episode of uh, Tales, Tales from, from Outer from space. Out space. Out space, where I take a space-related story from around the internet and read it out loud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Please don't forget to do the usual YouTube gumph, because if you don't, the nanite swarms will steal your other sock. But more importantly, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I'd quickly like to thank the following Tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you very much. All Systems Science University, 825. Written by Apophis Pegasus. On the borders of Eurasian space. No matter where, what, or who you are in the galaxy, hostage negotiations rely on three very simple questions. What do the hostage takers want? What are they willing to do to the hostages to get it? And how do you make sure that the hostages get out safe? In this particular case, what the hostage takers of the ASSU science vessel Tensor wanted was simple. Money. An old classic. They were pirates, after all. What are they willing to do to get it? Anything it took, generally. How would the hostages be saved? Well, that was the five billion cred question, wasn't it? Fifty million credits, no less! The large, battle-scarred Verasian paced back and forth in front of the tensor's viewscreen. On the other end, on a ship a few light minutes out, sat several hostage negotiators. A member of the Far Asian High Treasury, a heavily armed tactical response team, and a priestess, just in case. Ma'am, such a large sum of money cannot be moved immediately, and the treasurer replied. We must have more time. You've had more than enough time! The treasurer drew herself up to a full, albeit unimpressive, for a far Asian height. Madame, we have to institute an emergency requisition. File taxes on that requisition. Submit an HWUD form in a high treasury. Institute an emergency transport order. Convert the credits into hard currency. Transport that hard currency to liftoff. File the emergency resource transportation request. Ratify that request. As she droned on, the pirate captain looked more and more confused with each passing item of the list. Finally, she had enough and cut her off. Fine! Um, how much time do you need? Half a day or thereabouts, beamed the treasurer. Thank you for your... The vid screen went back, cutting off the remaining words she had to say. Hmm. One of the hostage negotiators turned to the treasurer with a worried look on her face. Do you, you, you think it, it, it'll take long? Spirit, no. The money's ready. I just thought that I'd buy you all more time. Grinning, the negotiator opened up her mouth to reply, but was abruptly interrupted by a ruckus just outside the door. Move! Move, you giant furry bundles of militarism! Those are my students there! Move, I say! The negotiation room door slid open with a slight hiss and in trundled the headmaster of all systems science university. A portly Trevelyan strode to the back of the room and glared at the assembled team. Where are they? I want to see them. One of the negotiators made a clowning gesture as she attempted to placate the quivering headmaster. All right, all right, calm down. We'll, uh, we've tried to get the captain on the line. Somewhat modified. The headmaster sat down in a chair, massaging the base of his siphons. Looking up, he stared imploringly at the negotiator. How, um, how bad is it? The negotiator fixed a tense look on her face as she replied. Not good. These pirates, they're a particularly nasty bunch. Even if we give them the money, they'll probably decide to terminate the hostages. Leave no evidence. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. We will do our best that we can. The headmaster massaged harder, groaning in frustration. Currently, his tenure was far too active for his liking. First, the humans. Now this. It was too much. The beep and the comms unit caused everyone to look up. The pirate captain was calling back. Her snarling visage filled one half of the view screen, with the other half filled with the varied huddled forms of students, sequestered in what looked like the ship's laboratory complex. 
The students looked unharmed for the most part, but unhappy faces were rife amongst the myriad of Varaxians, Padukians, Digonians, Varasians. Humans. Humans in a laboratory. Huh. The headmaster had an idea, a risky one, but an idea nonetheless. I would like to talk to one of them. He pointed at the lanky, dark-haired human. One. The pirate captain growled in her throat. I am not your butler, Trevelyan. Turning to the hostage rescue team, he fixed them with a pleading look. Eventually, the treasurer spoke up. There'll be an extra ten million credits in it for you. The pirate captain mulled it over. Grunting in assent, she left the view screen and returned shortly with the disgruntled-looking hostage in question. Covering him upside the head, she growled, Speak, and no funny business. Leaning forward, the headmaster addressed the young man. Hello there. J -j who is it? How is there everybody? Rubbing his head in the Korean replied, Fine for the most part. Nobody's been hurt. Well, we're complying on all that jazz. How many of you are there? About 250 total. It was a smaller expedition. The headmaster cut him off. No, no, no. How many of you are there? Glancing nervously at the incredulous glares now fixed on the headmaster, Juhu replied, Um, about twenty-five. Any specifics? Well, me, Hatham, Jim, Ophi, Jordan, Rick. The headmaster swallowed. Good, good. Well, I just wanted to tell you that 825 has been waived here, so you all should be safe and sound soon enough. Juhu froze taking his hand off his head and staring at the headmaster with an intense look. The headmaster stared back, unblinking. Around him, the hostage negotiation team looked around in confusion. Eight to five. What was that? Eventually, G spoke, slowly and deliberately. That's, uh, that's good. I'm sure everybody will be glad to hear that. G was promptly hauled off screen as the pirate captain stepped back into view. Now that that display of favoritism is over, where is a Her tirade was abruptly cut off as the view screen went blank. A few seconds were spent as the hostage rescue team looked at each other in confusion. The confusion was resolved as all heads turned towards the headmaster, with his finger pressed on the cut link button. Are you insane? What is wrong with you? The sub-minister's daughter is on board. What are you going to do? You do not ever, ever hang up on a hostage taker. Do you want your students to die? Spirit above, you just doomed those people. Ignoring the lot of them, the headmaster sat back down, seemingly content to let them lambast him. The yelling was cut short as an explosion burst from Tense's aft section. Sparkling debris floated free, the atmosphere vented in white clouds, only to be curbed by the emergency shield stemming from the breach. All sets of eyes in the negotiation room glared at the headmaster with a cold fury. He responded by taking out a pack of human cigarettes, igniting one and drawing deeply. Gesturing lazily at the comms unit, he drawled, You should get a call uh, back at any minute now. As if on cue, the console beeped. The view screen activated to show the pirate captain looking in a bad way. Half of her face was singed, and she was leaning heavily on the comms unit's desk. Emergency lights bled red around her, and a hellish mixture of gunfire and screams sounded in the distance. What the hell did you do? The negotiator stepped forward. Ma'am, uh, we don't know what you're talking about, but I implore you not to harm the hostages. We had nothing to do with the... I'm through with your lies. Now I... The headmaster sat back in his chair with a slow smile appearing on his trunked features. His serene appearance contrasted with the pure bedlam that he had unleashed. Again? Why would you do that? The headmaster wordlessly pointed at the comms unit. The blinking comms unit. The pirate captain looked in bad shape. Burns littered her face and upper body, and her left arm trailed limply at her side. Standing, shaking, she fixed a terrified look at the negotiation room. All right, all right, you can have them back. 
The console beeped again. Please, spirits above, we give up! The negotiators just stared open mouth at the view screen, not even bothering to stop the headmaster. Nudging forward, the priestess spun the headmaster around and mouthed, 825. The headmaster reached into his tunic and pulled out a computer slate and turned it to her. Rule number 825. In the event of a hostage or lockdown emergency, students are instructed to fully comply and refrain from confrontation to the best of their ability. Rule 825.1. In the event of 20 well-equipped humans, this rule can be waived under specific circumstances. All attempts must be made for an ethical victory. The console beeped again. The vid screen lit up with the distorted image. Intermittent burns of clarity, revealing scorched walls, assorted rifles, and sparking equipment. I want my mommy! All eyes now turned to the priestess, who had a large grin on her face as she pressed the cutling button. What? It's great fun. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.